Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Thursday, January 6, 2022. It's 152 Eastern Time as I'm starting the video. So a late to mid to late session update, and just wanted to, again, go over the charts. I usually step up my coverage on the uh, whatever it is I'm covering, whether it's the equity markets, crypto, bonds, gold, whatever, when there's significant developments. Uh, gold, silver, nothing's changed. They're soft today, but the you know the the 60-minute and daily charts still look constructive. Remember, they're in those consolidation ranges, um, but I, I still like those. So no update there, really worth mo noting. Uh, if I see anything big, I'll get to those. Just wanted to talk about the equity markets again, and, and I'm doing this now because we're up today, not much. Uh, this is the NASDAQ 100. The futures are up three-tenths of a percent, or uh, a third of a percent, about 0.34% right now. Uh, and I want to share my thoughts. All right. Uh, I think today, days like this are when I actually, uh, you know, like to, um, you know, revisit the charts, make sure everything that I was looking at the previous days still holds true, make sure there weren't any, you know, uh, whipsaws, recovery of levels, and there haven't been. So the takeaway is uh, this is if, you know, let's just say, for example, you came in, you hadn't been trading and you uh, you know, you saw the big down day yesterday and then you caught up my analysis or your own, you read, and you wanted to be short. Well, a whole lot better to short today than yesterday. Not not much better, but we're bouncing. And and um, there's a big difference. It would, does this bounce do anything technically that uh, changes or may change the uh, near-term outlook of the markets? And so far, the answer is no. In fact, a couple things. I'm just going to kind of randomly go out what, I, what I'm looking at today. Number one, you know, we're still uh, well above that 15,536 or reversed, you know, above that 15,536.45 level and we're still well above it right now. So we never hit it. And although that sometimes you'll see that, it's a pretty significant level and did not see it at least tested or slightly undercut. Uh, is is uh, unusual. So I still think it's going to be hit. And so again, if you were wanting to short yesterday or again, maybe you came into the, you know, caught up on the charts last night and said, well, I'll wait and see what happens tomorrow. You've got a better entry price here. Uh, so that's number one. And then number two, I still think if we get there, uh, we'll probably ultimately, whether we bounce on the initial tag or not, take it out and have a much larger drop. Uh, at this point in time, I don't see any positive divergences, not anything remotely close on the 60 minute time frame. That's usually my cue to uh, start booking profits on shorts and or start scaling into long positions. And you can see it's not even close. Uh, so we'd have to have another thrust down and uh, do so followed by a reversal to put in divergence, something like that, for example. Maybe that happens. Maybe that happens with that false breakdown scenario. So that's that's those are my thoughts. And uh, so again, if you uh, liked uh, shorting the market yesterday or thought it was objective, you got to love it today. I think it's a better, uh, more favorable entry price to continue to scale in, add to any positions, or take an outright new short entry. Um, you know, you don't want to go crazy long or crazy short because you're still above that significant support level. Still work to be done. I just jumped over to a uh, two hour period chart going six months. The first chart we were on was a 60 minute chart. And I wanted to share what it looks like to me. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and show you this uh, action recently. We had a sharp drop right here, followed by a bearish pennant consolidation pattern. We broke that. We had another impulsive leg down, and that took us to uh, you know our, our recent lows. Now we can also look from a little bit bigger picture. This looks appears to be even bigger flagging action. So you would say. Uh, this is a flagpole, there's a bear flag, and if it breaks, it's probably going to take us down below this level right here. Uh, bear flag continuation pattern, like any chart pattern, is a potential setup pending uh, an objective injury, uh, I'm sorry, objective entry or uh, sell signal. And so in this case, you'd want to see, you know, the flag, you'd want to see an impulsive break down through there uh, on increasing volume. And uh, and then, of course, a break of that 15,543. Uh, yesterday, I don't know why it disappeared. I had a secondary level that I gave you in the... Um, no, take that back. I might have had a level right here. Yeah, let's just stick with that. Um, or I'll give it to you here. You want a really a benefit of the doubt line, a line that really should be the final straw. It'd be below that recent low, about 15. 
15, 483 or so. But I, I think, again, I think a break of 15, 536 will likely do the trick. And there's always a near infinite number of possibilities in what the market can do. You know, it's not my job to say that because that goes without saying. But one thing you need to recognize is we're still within this trading range. So, uh, you know, a more uh, likely scenario is we can continue to bounce in this range for some time. And so, again, you're kind of all in moment. All in doesn't mean your entire portfolio into one thing or into all short the markets but a full position if your your number is whatever it is uh 30 50 percent of your portfolio on an index short remember index shorts are diversified by nature you're you know if you buy the nq or short the nq or qqq you're buying or shorting a basket of 100 companies uh you buy the s p 500 you're buying a basket of 500 companies in many different sectors and industries and so there is diversity in that versus putting everything into apple or any individual stock which can come out with you know some surprise bad news or good news and, and, and really gap or move fast against your position so that's it just wanted to say I think the balance looks good and now that segues into the next thing we're going to look at the um, the charts of a couple of those big market leading stocks and uh, QQQ so again it's not an all-in moment yet because the levels I told you before I'm watching we need to take out this trend line and uh, that uptrend line right there um, this is the QQQ daily chart and that 377.64 is the recent lows. Uh, I know it gets busy here, but when you zoom in, you know, you have these three distinct reaction lows within that channel. We kissed the trend line today, so we hit support. And again, that's TA101. Uh, you just can't make a case to go aggressively short. The, you know, the TA101 says, if anything, you want to cover shorts and go long on a drop to support. Or if you're bearish, no problem, just hold on to your shorts and then wait for a solid break below that level to add to the position. So that's that's it right there. Uh, again, I'm talking about scaling in, micromanaging. Everybody has different positions. Some of you are bullish and long, some of you are short. Uh, are bearish and short or some of you might be bearish and wanting to get short or bullish and wanting to get out of your longs so if you follow me everybody has you know not only uh, different entry points cost basis on your position so I hope it's not confusing when I tell you you know here you can add to uh, positions but again I just want to be clear this is this is the, should be the catalyst right there again if that recent low uh, or pretty much today's lows by a little bit more get taken out because it'll be that that uptrend line that I have and uh, the bottom of the recent trading range and it will also mean the breakout above this new all-time high is has now clearly failed because up until then these are pretty much just successful back tests of that level okay so hopefully that's clear and then just to kind of loop over to those big market leading fang stocks the reason that I could make a case uh, to add to or take a short position, again, not an all-in short, um, but uh, if you wanted to be, is this. I think this is what, you know, what happens. I look to, you know, I look at everything. As you guys know that half of, you know, a fraction of what I look at every day in the charts, I get to put into the videos. I try to put in the most salient developments in the market and things to watch. Um, but what, where I'm going with this is, okay, so I have a sell signal on the big dog. There's nobody like Apple. It's a three, the only $3 trillion company. Well, not any. Well, yeah, it's actually right, right around there, right? So we'll call it a $3 trillion company. Yeah, there's some other big ones in there, but uh, that one's broken down. And again, we had a check mark yesterday followed by an additional check mark today and it is still down and so uh, while we have a lot of other things holding up the market you know i've been watching uh for example how the different sectors are performing i've seen a lot of money running into the uh consumer uh, uh, uh not the discretionary that they've been going down and that's that usually bearish into the staples xlp consumer staples you can see it's been staples have been one of the strongest sectors and and so that shows you right there institutions are flocking into safety they they're seeing usually when money's rotating into de defensive issues such as utilities and staples as they have been you know your staples by the way that's procter and gamble coca-cola uh philip morris is in there you know your alcohol companies alcohol tobacco 
toilet paper, toothpaste, things like that. Those are staples, things you have to buy. And the reason that the institutions will flock into them when they anticipate the economy slowing and or a recession is because you're going to keep buying your Crest toothpaste. You might cut out that, you know, uh, you might not, you might skip that order on the Ferrari with the leather seats or whatever, you know, I'm talking high end luxury items. Um, but, uh, what you're going to do is keep buying these. So that, that is a sign. It tells you what, what the uh, markets are, are thinking there. And it's also a breakout right there. Uh, here's what I think is going to happen. I sh certainly would not chase it at this point. You can see you have a bearish rising wedge right there. A nice clean up trend line. I think it's a little too much too fast. And also we're looking at a, uh, a rising rate environment that we're moving into. And a lot of these staples, uh, one other additional reason besides their business model being sound, you know, relatively sound during a recession is the fact that these are typically your dividend paying stocks. And um, those that, that uh, you know, depending on how how much and how fast rates go up that could put pressure on the dividend paying stocks because interest rates rising um, basically poses a uh, you know alternative or a challenge to dividend stocks when rates are very very low investors and institutions flock to dividend stocks because you're getting three you know two three four percent yield and you're you're getting half a percent or less on a bank CD right now well guess what rates are going up not too far from now, we'll probably start seeing one, two, and eventually three, four, five percent on CDs. And now you have competition where, um, you know, especially your your more conservative investors think grandma, think pension plans that are looking for, you know, stable uh, investments. Uh, you get 5% on a bank CD, FDIC insured or a treasury bond. You're going to take that all day long over 5% on AT&T stock where AT&T stock and, you know, things go the wrong way over a quarter or two, you might lose 20, 30% of your principal. And that's going to more than offset that 5% dividend. So, uh, anywho, that's that's what may happen there. So I think right now, uh, I think there's the herd mentality is doing what they think to do, you know, slowing, you know, looking at uh, most likely a slowing economy and rising rates. Um, but uh, I think that's, that's, again, I wouldn't chase this. And I think when you start to see some of these sectors roll over, uh, again, the whole point of this video is to show you why, uh, despite today's bounce, I'm still bearish and if anything would consider maybe adding some short exposure on on the bounce. This is it right here. This is tech. Uh, you know, again, tech uh, isn't going to fare as well in a rising rate environment, but it continues to sell off and it's simple mathematics. XLK is the you know, tech sector is, I haven't checked it in the last week or so or a couple months, but it's always for years now been about one fourth of the return of the S&P 500 and over half of the returns of the NASDAQ 100. So this one sector is really the market and tech, uh, you know, is clearly to me is one of the most bearish charts I've seen in a while. You know, I've pointed out divergent highs along the way. Uh, each and every one resulted in a correction. Um, but uh, we have it again. And sooner or later, we're going to get a correction that takes us back at least to these 200-day moving averages and quite more. So there it is. Tech is also right on that minor trend line there. XLK, again, the tech ETF. And then finally, what I wanted to show you is, of course, Apple, which I already showed you. That And, you know, Apple's broken down and the breakdown stuck. Microsoft took out the uptrend line as well that I gave you yesterday. That's a trend line off the March uh, 2020 lows and also took out the 317 support level. That was the bottom of their recent trading range. I, I went over this today in an earlier video. Little bit more work to be done. And that's it. So if and as we break these levels, uh, uh, not only does that um, increase the odds that we're going to go much lower, um, but I think we'll start to see the selling accelerate. And at some point here, and this is why I pointed out, I'm pointing out this little bounce today in the queues where you can, uh, you know, short at a better price. Uh, I think things are going to pick up soon. And you're probably going to see in the next week or so a couple nice gap downs, gaps that then bypass this level. So what I'm getting at, and that's why I like to scale in sometimes if I can make a strong enough case to be bullish on a sector or bearish, is that... Uh, the markets love to deny exits when there's a crowded trade like, uh, you know, it has been in tech for, for quite some time now. It doesn't make it so easy for everyone to get out. They usually don't just put on a green light saying get out. And so uh, what can happen, it can, you can just gap down. And again, I'm just pointing, looking at Microsoft here, but this could be QQQ. And then guess what? You are waiting for that perfect, you know, all clear signal. 
but now you have a 3% gap down in the morning. You're going to say, well, no, I don't want to chase a 3% gap down. I'll wait for a bounce, and that bounce just never comes sometimes. So I'd rather be short ahead of time and am now, as I've made clear, than uh, – uh, and you know, if wrong, no problem. If we start running up here, uh, I can start scaling back out of the shorts that I've added to uh, recently. And then ultimately, all of them need be. But I've got swing positions on now. I'm not trying to, I'm not really in that hit and run mode that I have been in a lot of corrections where you can get quick, you know, quick pullback game, reverse into a long for a bounce. Uh, right now, I'm giving it a little bit of room because the charts to me are are about as bearish as I've seen in, in, in quite some time. Next up, NVIDIA. Again, I'm just going through some of these top uh, components here. Here's QQQ. Let me load that. So I already showed you Microsoft. Amazon starting to crack. The trend line in Amazon is not as well defined, so I'll just kind of put a little question mark. But again, it's the trend line I've had, and we're below it. Tesla you know, continues to roll over. Uh, Facebook trying to hold in there but again this one topped as i already talked about this is a stock in a downtrend um uh, can't you know the market is still close to all-time highs but this one's already dropped about uh, i don't know i covered it yesterday it's uh, from the highs all the way back in august it's already fallen 22 percent and uh both near term and intermediate near term trend is really sideways but the intermediate term trend is still bullish until unless these highs get taken out they pop 355, yeah, that's going to call that into question. But as of now, you're making these lower highs and lower lows, and uh, you know probably have another leg down, uh, almost certainly if the Qs fall. And that's it. Nvidia again cracked below the trend line there after yesterday's sell signal. Alphabet just took out that 2797 support. So the takeaway, and I can keep going, guys. Takeaway is I've got more check marks today. Uh, especially in the stocks that matter, the market leading fangs. We're seeing a lot of rotation right now, institutional rotation into other sectors, including financials, um, that they think will benefit well. But uh, and maybe this is just isolated to tech. And if it is, and, and uh, the rest of the market can hold everything up and tech runs its correction, well, guess what? Then we're going to see new highs in the market. When I say the market, again, I'm not, I'm not trading the S&P 500. I'm trading the NASDAQ 100, which already topped. And I believe that'll be a significant top. So there it is. Still some work to be done, but we've uh, today, despite the uh, Qs being up, we have more check marks. Again, QQQ is up uh, three tenths of percent right now as I do the video. And one more chart before I just do a quick update for you on Treasuries, because I threw that as a trade idea today. Uh, this one I want to see go as well. QQQE. This is the equal weighted NASDAQ 100. And of all the lines here, uh, this one's pretty big to me. About 81.37 is where I have it. I have a numerous distinct reactions. So there was reactions there. About one week or more of trading, we had a breakout. Successful back test. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so uh, bulls see what they want to see. They see a, a successful back test. And I'll say it again. I'll say this over and over. If you're bullish, this is where you want to buy. Why not buy that back test? That was a beautiful breakout of the previous highs right there. Uh, and you can trade this. This is an ETF. You know, the NDXE is the equal weighted NASDAQ 100 index, but this is the ETF that tracks it. Um, and, and also using this as a proxy for the overall health of the NASDAQ 100 because what I'm doing is backing out that overweighting effect that the fangs have because this, this QQQE applies an equal weight to all 100 stocks in there. So when this goes, it, it's a pretty clear signal that the NASDAQ uh, 100 has broken down. And so again, we're right on there. And so to make it simple, I got to watch my words. But as far as, again, an all-in moment, I think if you get that, solid break, solid daily close, along with everything else I just covered on the queues, um, that that's the point where I think, you know, it's, it's reasonable to bring it up to a full short position on the NASDAQ 100. And of course, you know, that's a full short position for that one instrument or that one trading vehicle. There's many different things out there. Uh, for example, I mentioned treasuries recently, but I told you it was lukewarm on it and thought it was worth a shot. And that was back, gosh, I forget where it was. TLT was uh, at support. But here's a 60-minute chart of uh, ZB, the 30-year uh, bond futures. And it's really firmed up. You have that nice, clean downtrend line, positive, aka bullish divergence there. First time in a while, right? 
We had some potential divergence that burned through, never panned out, but now we have a steep rising wedge. And look at this nice support right there at about 155, 168. You have these two major reaction lows right there. Um, buying something, uh, especially treasury bonds, while uh, uh, pretty oversold, you know, we hit extreme oversold levels. This is the most oversold that we've been uh, in months right there. Positive divergence at support and looking with tech breaking down and the likelihood for a correction in the stock market where you'll see a flight to safety bid, one of my favorite trades. So that's why I put it out and gave you static charts today. I mentioned in a video last week, but now uh, I like it. If I liked it, then I like it even better now is what I'm trying to say. And uh need to pop it. You know, it's a, uh, we need to take out that wedge. There it is. Oh, we, it looks like we just popped it. And so this is what you want to watch for, uh, you know, this one start starting to rise on volume. And again, my targets are pretty clearly marked 157.097, 157.310. Um, maybe all the way up here. Uh, this one, I'm just going to uh, let it run for the time being, if not stopped. And stops, look, I'll tell you right now, minimum target there, my minimum based on the wedge is at 157.310. So if you're looking at it this way, measure that up in percentage terms and cut that by about a third or so to determine where your stop should be. Plus, remember, this is support as well. So I give it. I like to always give my trades a little room for the market makers to play their games and, and have a little false breakdown because uh, whipsaws are almost to be expected in, in the, this market in this day and age, uh, but not much more than that. Uh, so that's it. And again, that's one of many trades. Uh, I'll do I'll updates on gold, silver. I already gave you updates on the uh, cryptos. Uh, those I also like right now to start layering into as longs. And um, that's it for now. Let me get the video out to you guys. And if I see anything big before the close, I'll do one more. If not, we'll pick it up tomorrow. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.